Good morning to everyone. It is an honor to open the 183th session of the Commission with this first hearing about the situation of LGBTI rights of the persons in Bolivia. And the goal of this hearing is to present information regarding the application of LGBTI uh, persons' rights in Bolivia during the pandemic, and also uh, in order to gather information regarding social, economic, cultural, and environmental rights with an intersectional approach. This hearing was requested by different organizations such as Mano Diverso, Transred de Bolivia, Mesa de Trabajo Nacional, Coalición Boliviana de Colectivos LGBTI de Bolivia, Asociación Nacional de Personas Adultas Mayores LGBTI de from Bolivia. I want to acknowledge all the representatives from the civil society organization, as well as the representatives uh, from the state. My name is Julissa Mantilla Falcon. I am the first vice president of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights. In this event, I want to greet with respect Commissioner Flavia Piovesan, second vice president and um, country rapporteur, thematic rapporteur for LGBTI rights and Commissioner Margaret May Macaulay, Rapporteur on Women's Rights, Commissioner uh, Esmeralda Rosemena, and Rapporteur on Children's Rights. We also have the participation of the Special Rapporteur on Social, Economic, Cultural, and Environmental Rights, Soledad Garcia Muñoz, Monitoring Secretary Maria Claudia Pulido, and the staff of the uh, Commission. We will explain some aspects regarding the methodology. We're going to start with a 20 minute presentation from the civil society, then 20 minutes from the state. Afterwards, the commission will make comments for 20 minutes, and then we will have a 10 minute um, round for civil society and the state. Regarding other aspects, I want to tell you that we have a digital tool in the platforms that is going to uh, register um, the time we should respect the time we have to speak because we have a series of hearings today and we need to respect the time. We also have bilingual interpretation and uh, also captions. These public hearings are being broadcasted and these uh, will be recorded and will be available in the YouTube channel of the Commission in English and Spanish. We are also on social media, and I will uh, request you to let your cameras on and turn your cameras, your microphones off when you are not speaking. I will now give the floor to the civil society organizations, the representatives. Good morning, Madam Commissioner, representatives of the state of Bolivia. My name is Morendra, the representative of the Red uh, Trans uh, Bolivia Tribal. And I'm going to tell you about the situation of the rights of the LGBTI persons in Bolivia within the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. First of all, I want to introduce my colleagues of the delegation, Frank Artiaga Consuelo, from the National Association of Elderly and Alberto Moscoso from the Bolivian Coalition of uh, LGBTI Collectives. We want to mention Madam Terriani from the Mesa Nacional de Trabajo who had to participate from in this event, but she died because she couldn't access uh, intensive care unit within the uh, health system in Bolivia due to, um, due to the fact that she was suffering COVID-19. We are going to offer information about violation of human rights and the lack of implementation of Resolution 12020. that affects elderly persons, LGBTI persons, uh, indigenous peasants, 
uh, persons who live in rural areas, uh, sex workers, trans persons. We believe that the Commission should have information about the implementation of Resolution 1 2020 by our state. Uh, the information and evidence was gathered and it is present in a national report that has included interviews to the members of the LGBTI community and those members that are at a higher risk of discrimination. Until March 2021, this situation is reflected. Through this hearing, we hope that the state and the commission can receive evidence and testimonies about this and that the uh, Bolivian state improves the situation regarding the enjoyment of our uh, human rights with an emphasis on our social, economic, and cultural rights. Antecedents and general data regarding the response to LGBT persons in higher risk of suffering from the pandemic. The world and region is going through an unprecedented crisis caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and the measures implemented by the state to prevent the um, virus should respect todos. human rights of all persons. The organizations that requested this hearing want to share information about the situation of persons suffering from multiple discrimination and their intersectionality. Persons Durante with a higher risk of discrimination. COVID-19 has affected the uh, people of the Bolivian state. We have evidence and testimony the cases of the persons who suffer from discrimination and the sector was the most affected by the COVID due to social and state discrimination. And there is systematic evidence that the state of Bolivia let our rights um, let them be violated. We don't know for how long the COVID will be in Bolivia affecting health bolivianos por tanto queremos solicitar atención that's why we want to request immediate action by the state and the officials of the Bolivian state and municipal departmental and national level based on the evidence so that they can start taking measures there's a problem with the speaker's connection empezó a mediados de marzo del 2020, lo que visibilizó lo que visibilizó una serie de problemas en las poblaciones que llamaremos para esta audiencia en mayor riesgo de discriminación. Entre hearing, we're going to mention those persons that are at a higher risk of suffering from discrimination. Persons of ancestral diversity, indigenous persons, 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 persons who live in rural areas, LGBTI persons with HIV, trans persons, lesbians. In April 2020, the Commission published the Resolution 1 2020 establishing standards to guide states on the measures they should adopt to contain and prevent the in fulfillment and compliance with uh, human rights. The resolution Pandemic and Human Rights in the Americas establishes that there are groups with a higher uh, level, uh, higher risk, uh, at a higher vulnerability situation, and the state in the region should provide and apply intersectional approaches and pay attention to the needs and the different impact of these measures of the human rights of the most uh, vulnerable uh, groups. As many other sectors of LGBTI organizations at a local and national level requested the state to letters interviews requested the state to overcome the situation of the pandemic in the region, but we did not get a response as we are considered a group at a higher vulnerability 
Situación de los derechos humanos de la población LGBTI en el contexto, contexto de la pandemia de COVID-19. Los datos del presente informe fueron sustraídos del reporte monitoreando el cumplimiento de la resolución 01-2020 Pandemia y Derechos Humanos por parte del Estado Plurinacional de Bolivia en la respuesta al COVID-19 desde un enfoque de derechos humanos y no discriminación. el cual contó con la participación de personas participation of LGBTI persons from the whole territory of Bolivia among which there were leaders activists of LGBTI organizations that were involved in the response to the crisis persons of, from the LGBTI communities at high risk who suffered the impact of COVID-19 we analyzed the information uh, according to different categories, taking into account the one 2020 resolution, human rights and pandemic in the Americas. The national government has not implemented any um, measures in order to favor LGBTI persons in Bolivia, in Cochabamba, and other municipalities, 95% of LGBTI persons at higher risk who suffered the impacts of COVID expressed that the government of Bolivia has not carried out a campaign to combat uh, homophobia, that to avoid discrimination against uh, LGBTI groups. LGBTI persons express that to the government of Bolivia, we are not a group that should be held or should be placed in a list of priorities. LGBTI persons were accused of the appearance of, or the, were accused of being responsible of the COVID-19 crisis. And the current government has started um, local measures uh, that have not even bothered to get to know the reality of diverse populations. They do not care. No national institution wants to uh, promote initiatives at the national level. The government has not started initiatives to protect the rights of LGBTI communities during the pandemic. Trans women express that the government has not prevented their constant attacks and do not be supported and protected by the government. We try to request help from the municipal and departmental levels and even the national government has not paid attention to these issues to prevent the pandemic uh, regarding the LGBTI community at a higher risk. We have requested officials at different levels to so that they can provide different um, elements such as uh, food baskets, but we have not received any response at any level. The LGBTI, LGBTI community at the higher risk was not included in the distribution mechanism and we did not have access to humanitarian help nor support to their request we have um, made through the different LGBTI organizations in Bolivia. At the regional level, there was an initiative in different municipalities. Information about COVID-19, all the information has not been provided to LGBTI persons. About 80% of the population, LGBTI population, are at the greater risk, and they have not received information that was focused on them about COVID-19. 75% of the LGBTI people at a greater risk say that they have not seen diffusion and information on COVID-19, 
by the uh, Bolivian state to indigenous peoples in their native language. Fourth, access to health. The LGBTI uh, persons at a greater risk feel that say that health services have not provided um, treatment free of uh, transphobia and biphobia to the LGBTI population affected by COVID-19. There, there have been no protocols for care, for health care for LGBTI persons. 70, sorry, 63% of the LGBTI persons at a greater risk consider that they have had no access to public health care or private health care to treat COVID-19, which includes attention or care free of discrimination, homophobia, transphobia, and biphobia. Mental health was not taken into account at no time during the, the pandemic by the plurinational state of Bolivia. Trans persons along with uh, older LGBTI persons have ha faced most of the difficulties to access healthcare because of the little sensitivity and transphobia and gerontophobia that still remains in uh, the healthcare system. During the first stage of the lockdown, we lost three of the members of our community because of depression and anxiety. The first few months were very harsh and we received no assistance from the state. Fifth, access to medication and care in services related to HIV. There have been problems in the distribution of drug related, uh, sorry, HIV related drugs for LGBTI persons who live with HIV. Also, the testing services were halted for a long time. There was the adoption of measures like the um, delivery of retrovirus to people with VIH uh, at their homes, but there have also been changes in the schedule of the treatments because of the government's decisions, even though there was an initiative to deliver medication in the cities. The problem remained with LGBTI persons with HIV who live in rural areas or provinces where uh, this program does not exist, and they were unable to access their medication. Six, attention in rural areas. The access to the uh, state services in rural areas for LGBTI persons was non-existing. There were only some initiatives for support from the civil society. Seventh, access to uh, housing. 75% of the LGBTI population say that their right to uh, housing was not warranted by the Bolivian state. Trans women and older persons were the people at risk who were um, who had their right violated, violated to uh, living, to housing, even though there was a law that was supposed to cover that right. Access to food, 79% of the percent of the people at risk say that because of the lockdown, the right to food was not insured by the Bolivian state. Nine, access to work. 80% of the LGBTI population at a greater risk indicate that during the lockdown, their right to work was not insured by the state, even though there were national policies to prevent firing during the pandemic, but these measures were not complied with. 10, government actions with vulnerable groups. The no national government did not present actions to protect LGBTI persons at risk during the pandemic of COVID-19. Local governments have shown good practices that have somehow have provided support for LGBTI persons. The government's approach with regards to healthcare does not consider gender identity and sexual orientation. So there was no answer 
by the Bolivian government for that specific group, nor efforts to ensure there would be no discrimination. They have not even uh, segmented the treatment for groups at risk. They didn't even include them. The government does not have gender perspective, no intersectoral sectorial or intercultural perspective since there were no mechanisms for inclusion for the most vulnerable groups, there have been no uh, accountability mechanisms and the government has not generated channels for justice access for, to report human rights violations. 11th, a human rights approach response. The government seems to ignore the law that protects uh, the vulnerable groups, and there have been no uh, their the, their protection has not reached uh, the most vulnerable groups groups uh, of LGBTI persons manifested or expressed that they did not know there was a law protecting them. The current policies are completely improvised and do not respond to the new to the needs of the general population much less to the lgbti population even though the there are guidelines from the un and the oas the government is not respecting their human rights lgbti leaders have no space for social participation in drafting pol public policies for covid-19 in the in three cities they were involved but their proposals were not taken into account so um, the conclusions, after all these consideration, we would like to make the following requests to the Honorable Commission. First, that the Commission should promote and request the authorities of Bolivia at the um, local and national level to ensure a response to COVID-19 that is inclusive, that is participative, that is intercultural, intersectorial, with an approach to human rights and gender perspective. Second, that the commission urges uh, the local and national governments to comply with the recommendations of uh, Resolution 01 from 2020, and that the um, creation of public policies with regards to uh, public uh, to COVID-19 should be drafted with the participation of LGBTI persons. Also, the commission should urge the government of Bolivia. I'm sorry, there seems to be a problem. Just a second. at the local and national level to ensure the economic, social, and cultural and environmental rights with an emphasis to the right to food, the right to health, the right to work, and the right to housing. And the, the commission urges the state of Bolivia to generate actions and campaigns that fight against the discrimination against LGTI persons in the context of the COVID pandemic with an emphasis on the discrimination against older LGBTI persons and our trans partners who have been most affected. We are at your disposal for any additional consultations, Mano Diversa, Transfer de Bolivia, National Table for LGBTI Persons, National Associations for LGBTI Older Persons. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. And because of the way you administered the time, now I will give the floor to the representatives of the state for 20 minutes. Thank you, good morning. Madam Commissioners, Julissa Mantilla, Flavia Piovesan, Margaret May Macaulay, Esmeralda Rosemena, and Special Rapporteur Soledad Garcia and Maria Claudia Pulido, representative from the Executive Secretariat, representatives from the LGBTI groups. We would like to respectfully greet you all. And it is 
a pleasure for us to take part in this space of discussion about the situation of the rights of LGBTI persons in Bolivia during the context of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Bolivian state would like to commemorate the work of uh, participation of the LGBTI persons groups on uh, in the memory of Raisa. Um, and my name is Janet Bustillos. I work in the uh, Office of the Public Prosecutor. I am joined by Dr. Fajardo Navarro, who heads the um, Human Rights Committee of the Public Prosecution. As the NGOs that are here today know, the Bolivian state has one of the most uh, warrantist constitutions in its history. It's a model for the rest of the countries in the region and our state and the constitution establishes that the state is based on the value of equality. And it also says that all human rights enjoy the uh, rights presented in the constitution with no distinctions and bans all kinds of discrimination based on sex or gender identity. And between 2010 and 2014, the state issued several so social laws to um, address violence against women, against um, human trafficking, a law to protect the older persons and to protect persons with disabilities. And also, uh, an education act. Among these, we would like to um, talk about the law of youth. And one of its principles is to recognize sexual diversities and the identities of the youth. And also the law for boy, girls, and adolescents that bans discrimination based on sex, sexual orientation, and gender identity, among others the uh, prohibition. It also prohibits the authorities of the educational system to discriminate students based on their sexual identity or orientation. All these clearly reflects the constitutional advancement the country has sustained to recognize the rights of the LGBTI population, including those under 18 years old. The state also has a law for the prevention of acts of racism and discrimination, which defines transphobia and homophobia. It also has a multi-sectorial plan against racism and discrimination for the period 2016 and 2020. And one of the objectives was respect and solidarity among people based on their gender identity and sexual orientation. We also have an executive order from 2019, which declared June 28th of each day as the day for the rights of uh, the, for the rights of people with sexual um, diverse sexual orientation. Also, do we have a national day against racism and other forms of discrimination? And also there was an executive order from 2011 that declared May 17, the day of fight against transphobia and homophobia in Bolivia. And this obligates institutions to develop um, activities with regards to this thematic. Right now, we have a law of gender identity that establishes the procedure to change proper names, gender, and the image of transgender and transsexual persons in all public and private documents. And the result of that was that by 2019, at least 270 people had used this. We also have a, an executive order that modifies a previous executive order and eliminated discrim the discrimination against homosexuals and bisexual persons because it called them promiscuous and did not allow them to donate blood. And right now, the Supreme Court is reviewing a constitutional resolution from 
July 3, 2020, which granted uh, the guardianship of, um, of a couple that had requested to be joined by Mary. Now, as the authorities known after an interruption in the law and order in 2019, after the um, return of democracy in our country, the Bolivian state decided to go back to the protection of the uh, really human rights of all Bolivians as it establishes, as established in the uh, 20, 2001 resolution. And we will like now to um, express how the state has um, tried to look after the um, LGBTI population on, uh, during the pandemic. During 2021, the state implemented a comprehensive strategic plan that has the um, realization of uh, testing, also mass vaccination, the coordination with other municipalities. The plan for vaccination against COVID-19 was first focused on vaccinating the elderly. So 2 million people by June 2021 had been vaccinated, had been equally vaccinated with no distinction. For the prevention of the pandemic, the government established a protocol for testing within the framework of the health emergency a regulation in biosecurity or biosafety measures, and thirdly, a protocol to treat pregnant women. The Ministry for Labor also has biosafety protocols to develop all kinds of work activities. First of all, a safety protocol for the industrial sector. Second, a biosafety protocol for the um, agricultural sector. Third, a biosafety protocol for the construction sector. And number four, a biosafety protocol for public institutions. And the uh, Council for Coordination for, uh, and for the Elderly approved protocols for, uh, for uh, housing for the elderly. Also in 2021, the Bolivian state also uh, presented spots in uh, several languages in our pluri plurinational state and sign language. And they were all presented in radios, TVs, national networks, local radios, and local TV as well. As an action to mitigate the economic impact on the most vulnerable populations, the state provided a special subsidy of 1,000 Bolivians to 4 million people from vulnerable groups as people who are blind, disabled, mothers, independent workers, and minors. We also created the national program to reactivate labor, which established uh, labor services to present work plans for the most vulnerable groups, for young women, for persons with disabilities, people at risk of losing their job, and others. Now, with regards to prevention and sanction of violence during the pandemic, the Ministry for Justice created, a gu created guidelines for women in situation of gender-based violence during the lockdown for COVID-19, and also a guideline called uh, networking in the most vulnerable neighborhoods. It we also strengthened our free line for gender-based violence and also created WhatsApp lines for the reports of violence cases. We also 
initiated a campaign to um, register an emergency number and trained our uh, the staff of the uh, state to on seminars about violence. Also, some autonomous governments like the one from La Paz passed biosafety protocols for sex workers, and this allows them to work when during months they were unable to work because of the economic impact of the pandemic. Right now, the Ministry for Justice, along with cooperation organisms, are diagnosing cases of violence against the LGBTI population in their right to justice and non-discrimination in legal proceedings. Also, the local governments of Trinidad, Beni, El Alto in La Paz, and the city of Oruro handed food baskets to groups, sorry, to persons from the LGBTI population. Also, the government of La Paz created a unit for sexual diversity, which um, donated food baskets to uh, families in the situation of poverty, persons with HIV and sex workers. Also, the state of Bolivia, through the Ministry for Health, defined a protocol to care for the indigenous peoples in the country within the framework of their social practices and traditions. And in response to the demands of rural workers during the pandemic, the Ministry for Justice has projected to modify regulations, for example, of the law that protects originary peoples who are highly vulnerable and has also proposed a as an executive order in order to protect uh, rural workers and originary peoples. During this stage, the HIV program, which depends on the Ministry for Health, in short, care for persons who live with HIV through messages that were broadcasted nationally. And the local departments of this program treated persons who live in people with HIV. For example, in the, in the city of La Paz, of La Paz they, they issued retrovirals. Local governments have also in short information about the pandemic was available for everyone in the networks of uh, the local programs for HIV, the HIV, the people who live with HIV. So finally, commissioners, even though there have been economic aspects that have affected all states, the state of Bolivia, especially since November 8th, 2021, has done its best to um, meet the human rights standards established on resolution 2020-01, for which has generated specific actions for vulnerable groups, including LGBTI persons. Because of all of that, in compliance with the principles of the plurinational state of Bolivia, and in order to uh, protect the human rights of LGBTI persons in the framework of international standards, we manifest these commitments. Attention to the pandemic, including the voluntary and free vaccination of all uh, persons in Bolivia over 18 years old to address the needs of the population in a vulnerable situation, including persons with a diverse uh, sexual orientation. Actions in state planning, to guarantee the rights of the population in a vulnerable situation, persons with a diverse gender identity as well. Thank you for your attention. The state has 
concluded, right? So I will now give the floor to the commission. First of all, I uh, will ask the country rapporteur and second vice president whether she has comments or questions. Thank you. First vice president of the commission, it is a pleasure and an honor to participate and I want to greet the civil society Manu Diversa, Trans Red from Bolivia, Mesa de Trabajo Nacional, the Bolivian Coalition of Collectives, and the National Association of Elderly LGBTI Persons. I also want to greet the representatives of the state and all my colleagues. Good morning to everyone. First of all, I want to acknowledge the importance of this public hearing for allowing the commission to obtain precise information about LGBTI persons within the framework of the pandemic and for this intersectional approach that includes social, economic, cultural, and environmental rights for the rapporteurship, this is a very important time to receive this information. I have three questions and comments. Firstly, once again, I want to acknowledge the effort of the state to provide precise information that the civil society carried out service that shared with the were shared with the commission about prevention campaigns, uh, access to information regarding the pandemic, and there was a lack of um, a, a specific approach regarding LGBTI persons. And more than 80% of LGBTI persons require more campaigns. In April last year, when we published the resolution 12020 Human Rights uh, during the pandemic in the Americas. I recall the state, what I mentioned, uh, campaigns in their original languages. So I would like you to uh, share more about prevention information campaigns with that perspective. I also took down notes of the commitment of the state to include specific actions and the suggestion according to the civil society regarding our standards there should also be there should also be included the voice the participation of the beneficiaries should be taken into account regarding Recommendation 71 of the resolution 12020. The recommendation is for the state to adopt campaigns to combat transphobia and uh, sexual and gender based discrimination. For the Commission, the culture that denies rights to LGBTI persons, all stigmatizing cultural aspects are a violation itself, but they have an impact on the violation of other rights. That's why we are now fostering from the rapporteurship a report about transformation and cultural changes that affect LGBTI persons and their rights. In regarding articles eight and 14, of the constitution of the Bolivian state uh, is related to scotians with the inter-American system. It is a clause that relates both systems to guarantee human rights. So I would like to receive more information about effective state campaigns to dismantle this stigmatizing messages 
according to recommendation 71 of the Inter-American Commission in the resolution. And my third question has to do with trans persons, access to health. I was listening closely to the protocol regarding access to health, but also regarding housing, the civil society highlighted uh, law about this and how do we guarantee that LGBTI community, how do we guarantee that they are protected? Trans women suffer the most and, um, and they usually die before they are 20, uh, 35 years of age. Also, LGBTI persons should be included in particular trans persons to guarantee their basic social rights. Finally, my last comment is to acknowledge the goodwill of the Bolivian state and this decision made by the court in La Paz that recognized the free marriage of gay men and allow them to be registered in the civic uh, registry service for the commission, the implementation of the advisory opinion, it, there, its inclusion is very important. Thank you for this opportunity. Commissioner Margaret May Macaulay, do you have questions or comments? Um, thank you, Madam Vice President. Uh, I agree with um, all of us from the commission, all of you from the commission. And um, so that I would not take up too much time, I greet the representatives of civil society who are the requesters of this hearing. And I greet you, Madam Director General and the other representatives of the state of Bolivia. Good morning, everyone. And, and good morning, especially to Maria Claudia. Good to see you back safely. Um, I, I just have a comment to make because both sides have been extremely uh, comprehensive in their pre presentations. And if I may just say that the, um, the state's presentation gives rather a, a, a very a, a praiseworthy report of what is happening. But one of the things that we have to keep reminding states is that um, we can have all the great laws and policies on paper, but the, the thing that is most important is to keep on monitoring, first of all, to, to inform and, and, and um, ensure that all parties, all peoples in the state understand the legal provisions and policies. And secondly, to keep on monitoring the implementation of those laws. Because this is how we have uh, complaints and hearings, both in the commission and the court, wherein the state is found wanting in the violations which occur, despite the fact that they have very good laws and policies, um, because people fall within the cracks. And this is generally the case with LGTI persons, women, um, and women in various stages and cycles of their lives. And um, um, extremely poor women, trans women, and, and others who are listed and have been referred to by both sides. We have, it is one, one, we, we have been in this world long enough to be aware of the fact that when we do not look after the most vulnerable, the poorest of the poor, the most needy in our communities, that we have a very long way to go because we're failing in our duty to treat them with the same respect as we treat each other. They're entitled to the same respect, they're entitled to the same um, protection of, of the, all laws and policies. And when the monitoring of those laws and policies fall 
afoul of their rights, then this is where their, their, their rights are violated and they suffer the consequences of those such violations. So I'm, I'm um, imploring Madam, Madam Director General, the state of Bolivia, to enhance its monitoring facilities and me mechanisms within Bolivia about the, the um, implementation of all laws and policies which affect these peoples. And so that we can get a better report. The annual report did make a, a critical analysis of certain um, instances of failure on Bolivia's part. So let us see that next, the next report is more praiseworthy than the last was. We, there are things that Bolivia can be proud of, but there are also things that you have to make a greater effort. Um, I am very concerned about, of course, women always, because we're always um, are vulnerable to attacks and, and trans women and Afro-descendants. So I will be, um, my rapporteurships are always checking on these things. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Macaulay. I will now give the floor to Commissioner Arosemena. Thank you, Commissioner Julissa, first Vice President of our Inter-American Commission and President of this hearing today. It is a hearing that I want to congratulate and celebrate because it allows the Commission to have comprehensive information so I want to greet the civil society organizations that had the opportunity to, to give us the opportunity of gathering this information. And if you have not sent it yet, we would like to have that, that information. This information is quite comprehensive and broad and allows us to assess the key aspects regarding the efficiency, the implementation of these rights and the analysis of the compliance with the resolution issued by the Commission and for the Commission, this represents an acknowledgement to the importance of our work in the identification of guidelines and orientation. And regarding the pandemic, the Commission has made a great effort and I hope you have access to all this information because this allows a comparative analysis based on those standards or guidelines. To the representation of the Bolivian state, I want to acknowledge your work. I believe that Bolivia has one of the best constitutions regarding the acknowledgement of equality, non-discrimination, and this concept of citizenship, broad citizenship. And this is reflected in the set of norms and laws that was presented as key information as well. The thing is how with the participation of the civil society organizations present here today and this political will from the state, we can narrow these gaps between norm or law and reality. The research presented by the organizations show precisely that these differentiated approach 
regarding the attention of collectives, LGBTI collectives with this intersectionality in terms of women's rights and their particular conditions, we have not mentioned children or adolescents, but this law regarding education should include information about the situation of girls and boys that are also part of these collectives and who suffer in several ways, uh, forms of violence. So as commissioner right now, and doing this hearing, I would like to know if whether it is possible taking into account the data you have presented, whether we could have information about girls, boys that belong to these collectives because I would like to identify their particular situation. I think that there's also the possibility to build bridges, to have a dialogue. The hearings allows this to happen. And one of the requests made by the civil society to work on the different levels of the state, this is very important because it is not only in the big cities, but also in the different departments, municipalities, people are there and people identify with a particular issue. So, we need to translate laws to facts, to realities, in terms of a comprehensive, universal, national prevention policy um, that includes all the different levels. That is what non-discrimination implies. That is what inclusion means that's i that is what i wanted to request and i want to conclude by acknowledging both parties for all the information that you have presented the commission always keeps its doors open so that this dialogue which are fruitful, contribute to finding answers, solutions, and in particular, in terms of LGBTI collectives, this is a process of transformations that has taken a very long time to be accomplished, but we can say that we made progress and we have to keep requesting rights regarding equality and non-discrimination. I also want to send my condolences to the relatives of those who have died, making this effort to achieve the responses that related to the health crisis our countries are going through. I just wanted to say something because I'm also the rapporteur for older persons and especially I wanted to uh, thank the information that was uh, provided to us and as my colleagues I will say that please send us that disaggregated information especially about uh, LGBTI and older persons and also, since Bolivia has ratified the Convention for Older Persons, which is a convention that answers to the principle of living instruments that incorporates gender-based approach. So from the rapporteurship and the commission, you are, we are at your disposal to contribute in this approach for the elderly. 
and the rights of LGBTI persons. We have an extra 15 seconds. I'm going to ask one minute uh, for uh, Rapporteur Soledad Garcia. Yes, thank you very much, Madam President and Vice President. Um, very briefly, specific issues. The Commission has issued three resolutions, one 2020 and also four 2020 about human rights of uh, people with uh, COVID-19. And there's one very important relating to vaccination. I have two things to say. First, my concern with regards to access to uh, drugs for people who uh, live with HIV. I would like the state and the civil society to send that information. And another one regarding the um, vaccination in this context of scarcity and if uh, especially vulnerable groups are being taken into account. I'm talking about sexual workers in particular. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Rapporteur. Now the civil society will have another 10 minutes. Thank you very much. We appreciate the space. It is a pleasure for us to be here with you and to have this dialogue with the representatives of the three national state of Bolivia. First of all, I would like to greet Dr. Um, Madam Janet. And even though it is true that um, the, um, she has made refer a reference to the entire set of regulations that favor the LGBTI population, I would also like to say for transparency's sake that all those regulations are were not the gift of any government because they are the labor of activists who have been working for over 25 years in conquering our rights and giving a new meaning to human rights in our country. Of course, we know that uh, it also took the political will, but this is not the place to see this, but we understand there have been several contradictions in the implementation. And I would also like to uh, make a reference to one of what one of the commissioners said, because one thing is to have regulations in your country, but the reality is very different. So there's a, a wide gap there where no government, and no government is taking that into account to protect our vulnerabilities as a population. It is true, they have uh, presented all the strategies they have developed and that probably have been developed. And we understand that the case of the pandemic it's not only in our country, it's taking place everywhere, but we should also mention that all these strategies and regulations have appeared in a very general um, framework. There has been nothing in particular for our population. We have seen terrible cases. Some of our trans colleagues and um, co-activists died at the doors of hospitals because they had no access to medical care. Many of the members of our collective who live with HIV because of the lockdown and because the entire health system was focused on COVID-19, they were unable to access retroviral, uh, antiretroviral uh, treatments that in spite of what the representatives said, they were not accessible. They changed the schedules of the treatments. And of course, everything that has to do with um, pharmaceuticals that was all uh, focused on COVID-19. So even though local governments have been taking action, and that is true because the central government has not, and we need to say this because we want to be realistic, the municipal governments of La Paz and Montero and others have provided effective answers at some point. But please remember, the pandemic did not last a week because the food baskets that were uh, given after some initiatives were food baskets, of course, for vulnerable persons to uh, help them for a week or two. But the pandemic has been here since the beginning of 2020. It's been over a year, or a year and four or five months, and that we have had no other answers. So another priority um, with regards to the um, campaigns for older persons, but some LGBTI older persons, unfortunately, received no attention when they needed it. They have talked about, we have, we talked about deaths because there was no effective and timely 
aid or help to these persons. We would also like to say that evidently there are a lot of regulations about indigenous peoples and rural peoples. But I would like to say, not only to the commission, because this is a reality that does not only apply to Bolivia, but the entire region, LGBTI persons who come from indigenous peoples usually migrate to big cities because in their own indigenous communities, they are harassed because of their uh, gender identity or their sexual orientation. It is, we should also say that we will send you the uh, entire report we drafted so you can all access the information and can analyze it with everything we said to morning. But something else that's very important is that even though we have some evidence about the adolescents who have been suffering harassment during the lockdown, because as you must know, in our region, and Adolescents who talk about their gender identity or uh, sexual orientation and depend on their families have been harassed and been censored because, especially during the lockdown, there have been very several suicide attempts and some associations who have been working in psychological assistance have documented that. Adolescents have tried to kill themselves. They have tried to run away from home because this harassment unfortunately occurred because of the lockdown. They saw many of their rights res uh, restricted during the lockdown. So um, if any of my colleagues would like to say something else, I will listen to them. Well, I'm sorry, I had a few comments with regards to what you were saying. I wanted to mention that even though there have been some policies and subsidies, please let's remember that the members of the trans community have not had access to their identity, to um, a legal identity, a document, so they have not been able to access these subsidies, which have not been much because tra our, the trans members of our group that are sexual workers have not been able to work. So the uh, consequence is that they have been unable to um, purchase food, medication, healthcare, House, housing, many of them were evicted. So these subsidies, they were unable to access the subsidies because they don't have a legal identity card. Another thing is that we would like to say to the government again, that I felt that even though there have been general answers, they are not efficient for our population. We need focused responses for the LGBTI persons. We are not saying this because we want privileges. Sometimes they say that. We do it because our dynamics are different. And because unfortunately going to a healthcare center in the city, even a private one or a public one, leads to discrimination. There's no focalized attention for us. So it's important for us to have that we are asking this to the central government because it has the access through the Ministry for Health to make this change. Many a time, this is not up to budget. It's a matter of will, a matter of having policies that can be implemented in a system that we already have and that there are no policies now for that. Another thing, is that I would like to say that we have sent public letters to the previous president and the current president, Mr. Garce and Ms. Añez. We have sent public letters to ask for meetings to try to coordinate these community answers to COVID from our approach. And none of them have replied. We sent two public letters to President Arce after he was elected 
and we, have ha we haven't heard back from him. I would also like to point out that the contributions we have sent were um, done with, the, with our society in a participative way, with the participation of leaders, but also with the participation of those who were directly affected by this. Our report is based on their opinions, on, this, on their feelings, on their experiences we have had as citizens. So these are feelings, these are experiences on the report we will send you, you will be able to read testimonies from this lack of care, real cases. We have had deaths. I was, I was, I held Raisa Toniani, one of my partners until she died. She was an activist and she was unable to access healthcare. She died while waiting for, an, uh, for intensive care and it, pains me so much to say this. And I know she wasn't the only case in the LGBTI population. They were unable to, um, there have been many people who did not access this report, but I'm sure there are many other cases. Thank you. I will now give the floor to the state for 10 minutes. Thank you. Um, there have been many observations and consultations. We will try to do this as quickly as possible, but in a general way, I would like to, to thank the acknowledgement of the um, civil NGOs that are here today in the construction of regulations the state has carried out for during the 14 years after the new political constitution of the state, which has opened up the, the spectrum with all the uh, fields we're seeing now. These constructions, these draftings of laws have been shared, of course. These have been communi community uh, laws that are owed, of course, to the participation of many, many activists. And this regulationary framework is a reference for us to draft all the public policies we have been implementing and the laws that we have been able to pass are part of are the national the regulational framework so that this will be implemented to all the local regions these entities have an obligation as enshrined on our constitution They have the exclusive competence, these autonomous uh, municipalities, they must protect and develop policies for women, older persons, persons with disabilities, adolescents and children, and all the population that are part of their jurisdiction. So they are the ones who should be implementing more public policies. Nevertheless, we must admit that there are several local governments that have done this. Now, I will give the floor to Jimena Fajardo, who will be uh, answering about the first questions that have been posed. You are muted. Uh, I would just like to remind you that the state could have an extra three minutes because during the first search section, section it did not use its, all of its time. Thank you. And also these spaces where you invite us, they are very important for the state because we get to know many other details that perhaps we were unaware of and that allows us to generate new public policies. And as many of the participants have said, we need the information that these groups have uh, presented to the commission so that we can analyze it and generate in the corresponding spaces, the um, recommendations that are necessary to comply with the recommendations that have been presented to us. So we will also send the report we have just presented, uh, the full report with all the information that backs everything we have said in this hearing, because it's not just a speech we decided to draft. Uh, this is backed on 
facts, and it's backed by the executive branch and other government institutions that have provided this information. And with regards to the request of why um, giving more information with regards to children and older persons, we will uh, request more information so that we can send it to you. As soon as we have this new data, we will send you the complimentary information. And now, yes, I will give the floor to Jimena Fajardo, who will answer to some of your questions. Yes, we're having a problem with the audio of Ms. Fajardo. Maybe it's your headset, but we cannot hear you. Okay, then we're going to make a little change. Just a second. These things happen. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we apologize for this inconvenience. I would like to greet the commissioners and all the representatives from NGOs. I would just like to answer to the first and second question about more information about the diffusion campaigns. It's important to say that um, based on the work of the Ministry for Communication and in accordance with the national plan against the pandemic, the national government has tried to do two campaigns on prevention and information. Within that framework, we have been able to generate content, informative content, to draft communicative communication materials, focusing uh, the information in three languages and sign languages, Aymara, Quechua, and Guarani were the three languages. We have also prepared messages that are published every week with specific content and also posters and other materials related to the prevention of the pandemic and the uh, later immunization of the population. We have an amount of, um, well, all kinds of materials that have been developed by our um, ministry. Also, there is a specific website called Bolivia Segura, Safe Bolivia, which aims at showing this information to all the inhabitants of our state. It's all about COVID-19. Also, our ministry has uh, drafted press releases. It's important here to point out that all these campaigns, as Madame Bustillo was saying, were developed also at a local level, which um, as this as was expressed in the presentations. Now, we um, think that the, uh, the information provided by the LGBTI uh, groups, oh, this is very important, but the truth is that the state does not have official data about the LGBTI population. Yes, it's probably a challenge we have as a state to carry out surveys and census because the truth is we don't have official data. And that is why even though the surveys are good information, we cannot consider them uh, official. We, I would also like to um, say with regards to the gaps between the regulation and the actual public policies and their implementation that for the state of Bolivia, we, this is a time of opportunity because right now we are developing new public policies. We are developing the national development plan that will grant the specific guidelines for the development of public policies, multi-sectorial plans in all these thematics, uh, children, women, persons with disabilities, and the commitment we had as a state is to incorporate to these public policies, as we have done so previously, these themes in compliance to international standards. So it's important to say that once we have this state planning, the institutions are now assessing these plans. So it's very important, and we recognize the progress 
and the contribution of these organizations. Now, with regards to the uh, national plans for housing, as you well know, our state has uh, worked as a main pillar of its policy to care for the populations that were historically excluded. So since 2010, we have been implementing and executing several housing plans. There was one in particular that you can, that could be covered by these uh, measures aimed at the LGBTI population that uh, we, could, we recognize that have been affected by the pandemic. We have this program, the extraordinary program for, for vulnerable families. These are programs that have minimum requirements so that populations who feel vulnerable can use them. And we also have had some specific results in the um, Santa Cruz and La Paz where we were able to execute these programs rather effectively. We don't have the specific information on whether there were LGBTI persons who were benefited of these, um, of these plans, but this is an affirmative action that the state has offered to the entire population. Now, with regards to the access to medications for the population that live with HIV, it is important to say here that we have an autonomy's law that establishes that these services is, are, must be provided by the local governments. So said the CEDEVIRS, which are the centers for the, um, for the care of people who live with uh, HIV are the ones who cover this. We have reports here, for example, this one is from the government of La Paz, which says that the uh, medications were provided by the Ministry for Health through the national plan and that have ensured the provision of these drugs. And also that during the pandemic, they have provided the medications in the centers of La Paz and El Alto continuously because these treatments are vital for persons with the HIV. We're not going to say that this happened in the entire country, but it was important for us to quote, sorry, to summon the um, local government of La Paz because I think it's the second, um, it's in the second place of the most inhabitants with uh, HIV. So we wanted to mention that. Now, with regards to the question of, um, Commissioner Rosemena about the situation of children and adolescents. The state has a specific council for children and adolescents. We have a specific code and a multi-sectorial policy that is now being assessed as all of our policies. And in the these times of pandemic and in accordance to the other consultations, we know that there have been specific campaigns for the protection of digital violence because of one of the most complicated problems because of educa educational reasons and the social networks has to do with digital violence. Also in accordance to a resolution issued by the Committee on the Rights of Children this year. So we can focus some of our answers there. And as Ms. Bustillo says, this, um, theme was not part of this, uh, the agenda for this session, but of course, we can provide more information once we have the specific data of how much we have done and what was the impact of these campaigns. That would be all. Thank you. Thank you. We are getting to the end of this hearing. I would like to thank especially the civil society, not only for their presentation, but for the constant daily work. As Frank was saying, the pain, the grief you went through and the commission is with you. I also want to thank the state for its presence, the goodwill, and we take down notes of your idea or what you mentioned about having uh, more detailed information so you can work further 
and we are always available in the rapporteurships in case you need more information. I want to greet everyone uh, connected on Twitter, on Facebook, everyone watching this event with an intersectional approach, LGBTI persons, the elderly, boys and girls who are listening right now. And we want this uh, message to be of hope, of acknowledgement of your rights. I want to thank the staff of the Executive Secretariat that make this uh, possible. And I want to conclude Kupananti Skama as see you next time. <laughs>